Hello, and welcome to a short session on using Blender for video editing. Today we're talking about rendering to image files. I can think of basically two reasons to do it. Uh, one is because it gives you a little more flexibility, and two, because sometimes the, your computer is just not powerful enough to be able to do all the things you want to and, and preview it in real time. Let's talk about the first one. Flexibility means uh, more options in uh, your final files. With Blender, you can output directly to a movie file, or you can output as a series of image files, one for every frame in your video. In a previous video, we talked about how to use this tool called FFmpeg to take an animated GIF and turn that into a series of images. That same tool can be used to take a set of images and turn it into a movie file. So. With that knowledge, plus the fact that we can do the same thing with Blender, take a set of images and then render out as a movie, that means that if we have a larger project and then you're looking through it and you realize there's this one section you want to make a change to. Well, if you were doing it as image files, you just need to render out that specific range. So let's say, for example, I wanted to adjust this thing we have on the screen here. I've already rendered it out as images, as you can see in this folder. Let's say I wanted to add a title to the beginning of it. So I don't need to render out everything. I can just render out that specific section. So let me go ahead and add a title here. And I'll just call it, okay, that's the name of it. Let me scroll down. That's what I want to call it. Uh, that's what I want to put in, rather. And I'll say example, and I'll change the color so it's a little bit easier to see. Um, and bring it up. Okay, and then now this goes until here. So I will, over here, I'll press the E button. So now I've adjusted my range to just the first 25 frames. And as you can see, when I scroll down here, it's going to output into that folder. I'm going to make sure that I have the overwrite uh, checkbox checked. And then when I go back to the top, click the animate, it'll do just that section. And now if I return to the folder and go back up to the top, you'll see now it has that a title. It has those adjustments to it from there. So now what I can do from, from this point, I could render it out. I could use that tool we were talking about, FFmpeg, to uh, turn that into a video or I could bring in the, that set of images and then I'll start working from there. So let me go ahead and do what we saw in the last video. I'll just copy the settings of this one, add in those images, press the A key to select everything, add image strip, and there you go. So that's, that's, that's an example of how you could do things. Uh, so similarly, my second reason for image strips as output of taking your work and dumping it out uh, as images. And, and be, the reason being is just too intensive, too uh, demanding of your computer to be able to do anything else with it. Okay, so we have my green screening example loaded. And if I go ahead and hit the play button, you'll see right away why um, rendering first, like doing a pre-render of those difficult CPU intensive sections to image files is uh, just such a good idea. Uh, so right now you can see we are, I'm trying to play it. It's going at less than one frame per second uh, because my computer is just not powerful enough to be able to do the green screening um, and, and, uh, and play back in, in real time. So solution is again to take whatever it is that's very uh, intensive for the computer, render as images, and then use those images in place of the actual work. Uh, so let me go ahead and stop this. And if I jump over to the compositing screen layout, you can see for this scene called green screening, it, I've already configured it to output as PNG files to this location. And um, I've already done it because it, if I were to try and uh, render that out right now, this would be a very long video. And if I uh, jump to that folder, you can see this is what it looks like. So I've got a whole bunch of images of Cookie Monster and it's already um, 
rendered as transparent images. So what I can do from here, I can go to the video editing screen layout and go back to the green screening. And from here, I will add in those images. So I'll go to that folder, select A, sorry, press A, and click Add Image Strip. And there's my images. Once that's done, I can go back to this original scene and make a change here. This is something that we'll see more when we get into compositing. Um, <clears throat> click uh, Use Sequence, like we saw before, for uh, using the contents of the sequencer. Uh, and then now if I go back to the beginning and hit the play button, you'll see it, it's still a little bit slow because it's trying to load up the frames off of my hard drive. Once it's already loaded everything into memory, if I go back, you can see at this point, it can actually play back at the proper speed. There you have it. There's two reasons why um, you would want to render out as image files. And just to drive the point home about the CPU intensiveness uh, being an issue with Blender, uh, let me show you something. If I were to, uh, I'll press the P button so I can select this range here and I'll click play so it just loops continuously. You can see now that I have rendered out as image files and then loaded those images in, um, once all the images are loaded into memory, Blender has no problems with the frame rate. I can go ahead and do other things as well if I wanted to. I could, uh, you know, I could stop this and I can add add a title like we did before, and you know, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, besides, maybe making it a bit bigger so we can actually see it, and I'll go ahead and play again. Right, and it can handle it can handle this without a problem. Uh, compare, contrast this to if I were to try to do this uh, as uh, using the, the compositor, it doesn't matter how many times I let this thing loop through, it will never be able to play at this speed. So let me go ahead and show that to you now. I'm going to jump back over to the green screening and I have to delete this um, strip. Come back to here. Um, I will uncheck use sequence. So it's back to using the compositor, a handful of frames. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. You see? So it's only four frames. And even at four, even with four frames, you cannot try to loop a specific set and then be able to see it at the full frame rate for, for this case. But rendering to images, eliminates that problem altogether. So there you have it. Um, hope you enjoyed that. And that's, that's it for now. So we'll see you next time. Bye now.